Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon.com. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking our wooden floor material from the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. Now, before we get started, we should take a look at the files that we're going to need during this video. Uh, we're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001, which is a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> and gun scratches 003 both of which I already have saved on my hard drive and I'll include a link to them below this video. Okay, let's get back to our scene. Okay, so this is our scene from last time. Hopefully it's looking vaguely familiar. <laughs> if you'll remember, we used a material converter to bring in a material from polygon.com. We then made a slight adjustment to the roughness map uh, via this reflectance panel. Um, we went down to the roughness area uh, we changed the texture into a layer shader and then within that layer shader was our roughness texture and we changed this to a screen type um, mix and this slider nap then gave us control over the gloss map. And it's actually this area that we're going to be adding our smudges into shortly. Um, but before we get started I do want to just go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be the reflections would be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get to work on actually doing this. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to bring in our smudges texture. So I'm going to click on image, and I've actually already navigated to that folder, but find your floor smudges, and you'll have a few options. I'm going to go for the overlay 16. That means that it's a 16-bit image, uh, which offers a, a, a greater color depth, um, and therefore more detail. Um, so when, when I've got the option, I'll, I'll always tend to use that. So let's bring that in. Uh, don't worry about that. There we go. Okay, so that's brought our texture into um, the uh, into the material or into this layering system um, and then what I'm going to do from there is right mouse button and hit edit and then you have a couple of color profiles that you can select yeah now you always want to make sure that, a, that an overlay like this is set to linear as a general rule if a texture contributes to the color of a material like obviously the color texture but also the reflection texture um, you'd want those set to sRGB you want the gamma corrections for the scene to be applied to those textures whereas uh, textures like gloss maps displacement maps overlays like this etc you would want that set to linear because they don't contribute to the towards the color and you don't want any gamma corrections applied you want the raw information from that texture so that's why we set that to linear i'm then going to hit this back button and go back to our layer and we've now got this mix type now by default it's on normal which means that at 100% the smudges are completely replacing the texture underneath yeah if I start to lower this to say 50 we're then getting kind of a 50 50 mix we've got a we've got a hint of our smudges and some of the roughness map but it, it's not ideal and if I were to go all the way to zero we just have a roughness map okay this this it, this is not suitable for what we're trying to do so if we change this normal to say a screen now a screen essentially is a brilliant way of bringing in the bright areas of one map and overlaying them on top of another map. So at zero we're still just seeing our original roughness map, but as I start to raise this you'll notice the roughness map doesn't change, we just get the smudges on top of it. Yeah, So that's why we use that mix type because it works brilliantly for this type of thing. So I'm going to leave this on 100% just for now. Um, I have a feeling that'll be a bit too strong of an effect. And we can start to see on our material kind of preview here the smudges coming into effect, yeah? Just about make them out. Um, but let's do a render at this point, see how they're looking. I'm actually going to keep the camera zoomed out just so we get a kind of better picture of what's going on. Uh, and I'll hit render. 
Okay, so we're, we're seeing the floor smudges are quite clearly working, but th there are a few issues. Um, first of all, the strength is, is definitely too high. Um, this is supposed to be a really subtle effect. We don't want our floor to look dirty. We just want it to have that, that vague impression of use. The second problem is the scaling. If you look at the size of these smudges, they're supposed to be kind of like footprints. Um, now, compared to the size of the floorboards, this would be some really kind of tiny feet. <laughs> so we, we, we want to adjust that as well. So let's deal with the scaling first of all. Now the easiest way to do that is actually to turn this texture into a, um, a projector because that will then give us some uh, control over the tiling, yeah? So what I'll do is I'll click on shader and then go down to effects, no, shader, effects, and then projector, okay. now. The problem here now is the projector doesn't have our texture in it, <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll duplicate that. So I'm actually going to delete this texture that we just created, and we'll just duplicate the effect within within our projector. So let's right mouse button on that and hit edit, and then you have the option to bring in a texture. So we'll just duplicate what we did before. Yeah. So we've brought in our texture. We're going to um, click on the texture and reset the color profile to linear. And then that's it, we're, we're back where we were. Within the projector, we want to change the projection to UVW mapping, because we want to use the, the UV coordinates that the uh, projection was already using. Um, and then that is it, I believe, on these things. Yeah, so now, now we can just affect these tiles however we want to. Now I think a value of about two point, no, sorry, we want to go the other way. <laughs> we want to make these bigger, so we want to we want the tiling to be less. We're going to go for about 0 0.65, 0 0.7, something like that. Um, you can you can just about tell from this preview that the smudges are kind of a more accurate size now. Maybe 0.6. It can be kind of hard to make out um, at this stage, but yeah, I think that will work well for us. Now, now the footprints are more realistic size compared to the scaling of the floor. And now if we go back again, we, uh, we're in the same uh, situation where this projector now needs to be changed to screen and uh, we can now adjust the strength of it with this slider, like so, yeah? So let's just give this a name, keep things nice and neat and tidy. So this is smudges, but I'm also gonna, just as a little reminder, put projector, just so we know what to expect when we go further into that part of the, uh, of the material. So that's the uh, the scaling done, and now we need to get the strength right, and that, as I said, is with this slider. Now I think a value of about five, fifty-five percent, yeah, should do pretty well. Um, so yeah, let's run another render and see how that's looking now. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Um, yeah, the smudges are, st are still there, but a lot less obvious, and the, the scaling looks about right as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, I think we can call the smudges done and move on to our scratches. So to do the scratches, we're going to uh, back up back into the main part of the shader and I'm gonna go over to the basic panel and you'll see here there's the, the various parts you can turn on or off. Um, we want to activate bump. Now we've already got our normal map in place here um, from the, the floor. Um, now we, we we don't want to touch the normal map. That's working just fine. It's 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 uh, giving the, the 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 height information for our floor material. What we're going to do is add to it via a bump map. Okay, um, and this is a this is quite a bit simpler than the previous method. So that's good. So I'm going to click on the texture button there and navigate to where our gun scratches are sitting, which is here. And again, I'll bring in the overlay texture. Okay, like so. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, now, if we actually click on that texture, we need to do the same thing again. We want to change the color profile to linear, uh, and we also need to invert this texture because we have we have one problem that's very obvious by this preview, in that the the scratches are currently bumping out of the floor rather than cutting into them, uh, and that's because a bump map will take an image, and the whiter areas of it will be what it what it counts as up or out of the, the surface uh, and it will 
cut in with the, the, the darker areas. And this is a, a, this particular overlay is white scratches on a black background. Um, so to flip that over, just change the black point to one and change the white point to zero. And that inverts the texture and you can now see the scratches are cutting into the floor. So that's good. Um, the next thing we need to do is adjust the scaling. Uh, and we're gonna have to do that in pretty much the exact way we did before, which is to go to effects and then a projector. But in this section, it works a little differently. If I go into the projector now, you'll see it's actually kept our gun scratches. It's just the, the way that the bump part of Cinema 4D has been, has been done. Um, so that's kind of handy. We don't need to redo our texture. What we do need to do is change this to UVW again. And then we have our tiling options. Now, in this case, we want the scratches to be smaller because they're too large at the moment. Um, so we're gonna raise this to a, about a value of three or so. Maybe even higher than that, maybe something like 4.5. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from this preview, but I think I think that'll work pretty well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> we don't have to do much else. So if I go back to the bump section, we've now got our bump strength. Um, what we could have done, in fact, rather than inverting the texture, is just give it a negative strength. That's another way of doing it. Um, but I'm. I, I, I did it that way, <laughs> and this will allow us to choose the strength of our bump. Yeah. Now we want this to be really, really subtle. But first of all, I'll do a render at around ten percent to see what we get, and then we can adjust it from there. So let's hit render again. Okay. So I, I actually paused the render halfway through there and had to up the bump strength because you couldn't see it at all. Um, which you, you'll see now on the right there, my uh, strength is now all the way up to one hundred percent, and. It's actually only just a little bit stronger than we probably want, um, which is good. Uh, I, I forgot how subtle the, the bumping in the physical uh, renderer was. <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually set this to about an 80% uh, value. I think that will work pretty well for us. See, it looks so much... I, I, I was going by the, the, the preview there, and it looks like it's going to be way more obvious, but uh, apparently not. Anyway... It's looking good. So um, let's just go in a little bit closer for kind of like a final render. Make sure it looks good in that situation. I'm making sure to catch the light from the HDR because that's the only real area that we'll be able to see our smudges in properly. So uh, yeah, that should work. That should work pretty good for us. Something like that where it's really catching the light. Yeah, might be a little too close. Okay, so there's our, our finished render. Um, the scratches are actually way too strong. It was, uh, I think when we were zoomed out there, we weren't quite getting the uh, a full indication of how, how strong they were gonna be. So I was probably right uh, with, with a lower value of around, between, somewhere between 10% and 30% would be the the, uh, the result we want, because it, it should look really subtle, not, not like, not like a, pack of dogs have gone crazy on your floor. Um, but the, 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 the principles, uh, the principle's the same, and uh, I think for, for a tutorial that will do just fine. The smudges are looking pretty much spot on. Uh, we've got the strength and scaling for those perfect. So uh, yeah, good render. So in summary, we've taken our material from the last video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel.